Yeah. They had a whole explanation, blah, 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 blah. Somebody wrote on the bottom of it, just say it floats. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, yeah. You know, I, 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 on, on the tagline, <laughs> and, and not the, 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 to take what Trace is saying uh, away from that, but one of the, ta a, an effective tagline change that was made for an organization, I want you to think about this, Walmart. Walmart used to say, always the low price, always. That was their tagline. Mm -hmm. They started getting a lot of negative blowback on that because always the low price meant that you were screwing your supplier and screwing your employee. So they changed that. What is Walmart now? Save money, live better. Who doesn't want that? Okay, so you know it's a subtle difference. It's still the same company. But you can see how they wanted to position themselves. And they used that, they used that tagline a little bit to, to position that the always the low price, they used that for a long time. But boy, that's, they started getting some heat over the implications of that. So they moved to save money, live better. Oh, that's so, like, just what you were doing over here. So even those two things, <clears throat> you know, just we we're talking about moving beyond the logo, like one of them makes you feel kind of icky. Yeah. And the other one, the new one, makes you feel a little bit warm. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, so it's, yeah, because, you know, if you if you said always the low price, do I really want to do that if it means screwing <laughs> my neighbor here who, you know, supplier? No, or works at all. No, I don't want to do that. But save money, live better, sure, yeah, I want to do that. Everybody wants to do that. I have to share this. My <laughs> mother always said she was a school teacher, but kind of a psychologist. And she said it depends on how you present things to someone, how they might react. So you can tell somebody that they're flat-headed, and you'll probably get ticked off at you. <laughs> but if you tell them they're level-headed, they'll think it's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Same like thing. <laughs> I like, and, and you know, I want to be clear. This isn't a matter of manipulation. It has to be true. You know, there, there has to be a truth to it. And then those Walmart statements, they're both true. You know, they're, they're kind of where they want to be, what they aspire to be. Um, they're not, they're, they're, there's a truth to it. But yeah, so it, it's. Well, why don't you come oh, and tell okay. me a little bit more about how we, okay. does well, that, that work for them? That gets us through, yeah. That and gets us through the, 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 right into the Wisconsin it, you know. mold there, so. Okay. So Tracy, you know, Tracy talked a little uh, about our brand platform, which includes that ambition, the mandate, our values, even the tagline. Is any of this revolutionary or shocking? No, it's kind of like you're looking at each other, and, yeah, that's what we do, you know? It shouldn't be revolutionary or shocking. Good marketing isn't, it's not like pretending you're something else. It's got to be true, and it's in sync with what our individual councils are already doing. We're not kind of like pretending to be somebody we're not. We're just kind of coalescing around what we are, or who we know we are, and, and making the most of that. And of course, the, the brand platform is relevant to a set of customers. Um, in our case, it's you know, people like the DNR folks. I, I know every state calls it DNR something different, but ours is the Department of Natural Resources. Okay. A lot of those guys are overworked, the DNR, the budgets are cut. They look for somebody who can get things done on the ground a little bit cheaper and faster than they can. Okay. We're, we can do that. Uh, lake associations that have problems with invasive species. They don't have the expertise to do it, we can provide the manpower. So it's convenient, it's relevant. What we do is relevant to a set of customers. Um, yeah, the things I have in my notes here, I said, we all know that the politics of development and environmentalism has become increasingly polarized, and that's kind of where we want to we want to take that position. We want to hold it. Frankly, one of the threats we talked a little bit about there, and I and I worry about this. I think probably more than, than some of the others in the association is, are what I would call the astroturf conservation groups, the ones that that are invented by people who are truly just plain old pro development. So they come up with some sort of name that sounds like conservation and they get an award from it. Yeah, I've seen politicians who are, they're horrible for the environment, and yet they can say, oh, I got this award from so-and-so conservation. If you look on their little website, it's funded by some sort of industry group. I think that's a real threat, though, because I think we're the real thing when it comes to real solutions, you know, uh, solutions that balance the, the, the economics with environment. But we got to always kind of be on the lookout here on the side for those people who are going to try and creep in on the side and catch in on what we do in a fake way. Um, and I, I, I think that's a, a legitimate threat that we, we have as an organization. But anyways, revolutionary shocking? No, your branding shouldn't be revolutionary or shocking. It should just make sense.
should say who you are and should be relevant to a good set of customers. Okay, those brand principles that Tracy's talked about, now we're gonna get into the real nuts and bolts of things. They form the first part of a document that we created called the Branding and Visual Guidelines document. I'm not real creative when it comes to naming things. I, I, I thought about that and I said, well, this is what they are. So let's call them Branding and Visual Guidelines. Um, it's the first part of the document. And it's an important part of the document. If anything that we want, or at least that I want you to take away from this message, is that the branding isn't just those um, graphic standards, the visual consistency. That's part of it. If you look, if you can get a copy of our uh, branding and visual guidelines, you'll see that it does include graphic standards to promote that visual consistency. That includes how the logo and tagline are used, the color palette that we use. That was a challenge, let me tell you. When you get like a bunch of people in the room and they're all using different colors now, uh, okay, what's our color palette? That we're gonna, it, it's, it's challenging. The typography that we use, the, the, the fonts that we use. Even photography and imagery. This is gonna be a, a, an ongoing process for us, but I can assure you, I think a lot of us fall into the, the unfortunate practice when we're doing photography is that we like, like our boards, the directors like their home pictures. That's the last thing that we should have in there. We really need to focus on what we're doing, what gets done that benefits people, not those, not the officials of the organization. And finally, voice and writing style. That's a little bit of a softer thing, but we included some things on there um, that are kind of in line with what those brand values are. We have copies of, well, I guess we don't have it. We can get you a copy. <laughs> we can get you a copy. <laughs> but I want to be, you know, Tracy and I went back and forth on this. We, at first we thought, well, we'd bring a copy for everybody. I really didn't kind of want to do that because I, I think it'd be too easy for you to say, well, let's just take their name off this and put our name on it. I'm telling you, you can't do that. You really need to do that discovery process for yourself. What worked for us in Wisconsin, what we came through, you'll probably find some similarities. Yeah, and that's where that initial slide that, talk, that Tracy uh, had says, are we more alike than different or more different than alike? You have to find that out. It, 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 I don't have the answer to that. You've got to discover that answer. If you are, then you, can, then you can collaborate on things. If you're not, you're just going to be going like this all the time you're out there, and, and it's, it's not going to come together for you. So, yeah, uh, we can share that, but I really would, would caution anybody about saying, oh, this is going to be easy. All we got to do is, you know, cut and paste our name where theirs is. Don't do that. It'd be the worst thing that you can do for your organization. Uh, implementation. Yeah, so, kind of bring it back to our story again um, about how we did it. Um, again, you know, Bob's words, more evolution than revolution is is pretty true. We um, this is not a whole bunch of new stuff, but how are we going to make it work for us? Um, so, and of course, we don't have a ton of resources to just immediately get it started. So it's a work in progress. And every time we meet, we meet quarterly. Um, we talk more about you know where where we are in the process of implementation. So um, the materials now going forward, um, you know our. Um, writing materials or stationary envelopes, that sort of thing. You know, the next time somebody's ready to order a box, that's when they're gonna implement the, the, the standards. Um, so, so each of the councils are working that way, you know, if they're gonna do it, uh, you know, if they've got a target market an audience, they're going to a conference or something and they need a banner, they're gonna incorporate the standards at that time. We're not just gonna cross the board. Nobody has the resources to do that, so. Um, but what we really, our website is a little bit more ambitious, our goals there. I think we all agree that that was the place where we could um, have a real overall look and then the individual underneath the umbrella of the State Association of RCD. So as far as um, hosting the domain, the registration, we all have different products we're using, we all have different hosts, we all are, well, we're really on different pages. So this is gonna take a little bit more time and more information uh, or time to implement than the others. Um, but we do feel that that is one of the most important things that we're going to be working on here is the, um, the overall website design. And, um, and then the other one is um, the economies of scale. So when we go to, you know, a trade show now that we've sat at our table and figured out, you know, here's our target audience, who can attend? 
and then we can start using resources from, um, you know, I can bring this and you can bring this and then we can come together and not one group has to pay for the whole thing. So economies of scale work for us in that way. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to apologize for using my notes because I always just ramble on and I have to make sure I hit my points. <laughs> um, oh, and the other thing about the website that we wanted to make sure that it was mobile friendly because um, a lot of those, you know, so we really need to redesign the whole thing so that they're mobile friendly too. And just having a more uniform approach is something else that we talked about. So now going forward, when we meet, we'll meet again at the end of October. Um, we have a, an, up, an update about what's going on with our websites. Um, we had targeted three um, trade shows. One was like the, uh, the Wisconsin Towns Association. We thought that would be a good audience. Um, we're going to Wisconsin Lakes and Rivers. Uh, com annual conference, we figured that was a good target audience. So we're doing a lot better job at figuring out where to best spend our dollars and where to um, <coughs> hit our target audience. Um, I want to speak just to, uh, before uh, getting back up there about the, the website itself, because that's one of the biggest issues. And it's also one of the more challenging ones because it involves some technical expertise that we just simply don't have on staff. I don't have it. And, uh, um, on staff we don't. But I have a I have a really pretty clear vision of what I want that website aspect of this to, to become. Having said that, I, I'm always reminded that one of the first, one of the things I heard a long time ago is that there's a fine line that separates vision from hallucination. <laughs> they, both, they both involve seeing things that aren't really there. And, and uh, <laughs> so, that said, that disclaimer out there, the vision that I have for the website is, yeah, incorporating those new graphic standards, visual identity, because if anything, when people go from place to place, your website is probably the first thing that they're going to see in terms of comparison to one. They may not have your brochures, this one over there and that one over there, but they're sitting at their, they're sitting on their phone or in their home, whatever. They can look at your website and the next guy's website, and, and so I want some consistency there. Also, in terms of economies of scale, if we can get to the point where we have a common uh, web host, common platform, it's going to be real easy to share materials. You know, again, we talked a little bit about these, the, the, the RCD that we have aren't all that different in terms of projects. So every time if somebody's doing a, like a, an AIS removal on a lake, well, why would we have four people write that story and put it on their website when one person could write that story and it could be shared by the four real easily? That's, that's, those are kind of some of the economies of scale that I'm looking for with this, because those stories are pretty similar to one another. I appreciate you mentioning that, because yeah. I know there were way more ways that we can share resources than what I shared with you, and I just couldn't remember. Yeah, and, and the web is one of the biggest ones. I mean, I, I, I can kind of envision, this is, again, the vision thing, hallucination vision, blog um, there, you know, and, and that blog could be rotated among the four. So you're only just writing one every three months. That are, you know, instead of one every month or whatever the frequency we establish. There's so much opportunity for that. Again, because the messages are similar. If the messages are different, if, you know, if, if, their, if uh, Lumberjack's brand was so much different from Golden Sands, that's not possible. Um, but they're not. There's, there's so much consistency between the two. They are individual. There's some unique aspects, but there's more in common than there is um, that, that separates them. So that's uh, uh, specifically on the website. We are making some progress on that. I hope to have brought the uh, kind of a template form because Golden Sands is working on the kind of driving that into a, a format that we can all use. We've sort of chosen Wix as a platform, and I know, you know, everybody, everybody's, God, there's so many of them out there, so many kind of web hosts. Wix seems to be fairly affordable and somewhat flexible and fairly user friendly. Um, you can tell by the way I'm saying it, uh, nobody's the best at this. I rather, I don't think I've ever seen one that says, wow, they're great at everything. Let's go there. Um, it's, it's pretty complicated stuff. Yeah. How is it spelled? Uh, Wix is W-I-X. We use GoDaddy, right? GoDaddy. Yeah. 
GoDaddy is pretty that's pretty that's user friendly, but it's awfully yeah. expensive. Um, you know, in terms of web platforms, it's one of the more expensive web hosts. And, but uh, yeah, the platform is easy to use. Yeah, um, I think it depends on the website. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things too that you have to do is is, is determine what kind of uh, uh, what, what functionality. Yeah, 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 yeah. What functionality you need on the website and that kind of stuff, and and uh, go with that. So. Yeah, that's a complicated area, but boy, to me, that's one of the, like, the biggest opportunity that we have as far as, as bringing that together. I was hoping we'd be a little further along on it than, than we are right now, but we're getting pretty close to being able to launch one of them, and I think the others are probably going to try to hold in on that. Um, we should be able to save some money on it from everybody doing their own thing completely, and we should be able to share a lot of resources, which again, is another money-saving kind of thing. And all those things together, then if you look at it from a customer standpoint, it makes us look like if you're dealing with this RCND, well, you're going to be kind of like dealing with that one too. You know, and, and that's the way we want to feel. We don't want, because we define ourselves, I don't know how the rest of you are, we define ourselves by geographic boundaries. But, um, you know, if we have a, a potential customer who's in maybe a border county or more than, you know, has the same issue in more than one of service regions, we, won't, we don't want them to think that, wow, those are two different, completely different organizations. We want them to think, hey, I know what it's like to deal with an RC and D. They're the good folks. And, and you know, and, and have a consistent approach in terms of how we, how we uh, work with them. Sorry, I didn't mean that. No, I, I, it's all good information. I think, you know, just practically wise, locality wise, I guess a better term, but we all realize it's not an overnight process. That it's not going to just happen just like that. So we know that we know that the best thing we have going for us, I mean, the whole thing is going to be when the website is done, and you know, we can use that and uh, pull those resources. But we also realize that it's not going to happen overnight, and that we have to be patient. And it's plugging along; it's always a work in progress. But um, some of the print materials have already been done. Right? You know, our strategy on that is use up what you got. Right now? Um, yeah, use up what you got, and when that's done, we'll, we'll, we'll migrate to the new standard. We did. Um, take a look at yeah, that either the brochure or the. Oh, know, that's not showing up on the screen. It's not. No. <laughs> wow. Oh. You guys don't want to see that anyway. Too bad. Yeah, we'll turn Tracy's screen around. You can see it. We, we can show you some stuff at, at, uh, after the presentation if you're interested. But again, they all. <laughs> <laughs> now, is it working now? No. Yeah. They incorporate the new color schemes, they yeah. incorporate the new messaging, they incorporate the typography. It's just a traffic jam. This is a little something that we, that we do have done already. Yeah. Okay. What does right. <laughs> SWAT stand for? Uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And they're a good way to kind of, uh, kind of take a look well, at, at those aspects of your organization. What are you good at? What, what's the, the best thing? What are you not good at? Um, then there's opportunities. Opportunities tend to, to spring mostly from, from the weaknesses um, that, that they can create an opportunity. And then threats, what kind of internal or external threats are coming at your organization that could either seriously hurt you or put you out of business entirely. I had a boss that always used the phrase, he said, there's no such thing as a problem. There are always challenges and opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 